Well, hello. Today is Saturday, August 12th, and I'm going to do my Weight Watchers me meeting weekly highlight. That's a mouthful. Um, for this week, this is uh, Stand Up to Stigma, was the meeting title. Uh, I also got a sticker which says Commit. So, pretty much got my vision board pretty well filled up. Um, I am going to commit to losing the rest of my weight for the uh, rest of August to reach my 50 pound goal, which brings me to my uh, weight today. I weighed 257.9 and I had a 1.8 gain, which wasn't as bad as I thought. I, uh, be honest with you, I really thought I was going to gain more than that. Um, Last week I lost 5.1, which I told you last week I didn't really feel that was a true loss. I traveled on Friday. When I travel, I don't eat while I'm on the road. Uh, we left at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning central time, which, and then I got home at night at 8 o'clock eastern time. It was a little after 8, probably 8.15, and um, I hadn't eaten all day. I, I don't eat. I, I just can't eat. I have... Um, irritable bowel system syndrome and uh, most of the upper peninsula is few and far between restrooms <laughs> so um, it's just easier for me not to eat um, not to say that we didn't stop because uh, everybody in the car had breakfast before we left they did stop for lunch and then when we did stop for a snack along the way and um, and then when we got home we had dinner and I had for dinner I had a pretty heavy dinner though I had uh, bacon and eggs and hash browns and toast and a glass of milk, which was my only meal. So Friday, Saturday really wasn't a true 5.1 loss. I took it. You know, who am I? I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm going to take it. But I, I knew that my body was going to have to fluctuate to get back to what my weight really was. And um, the 1.8 gain kind of reflects the body um, <clears throat> resituating to my eating habits and stuff. I really didn't go crazy. I, if you saw my videos, I pretty much stayed pretty much on track. I did have a few days where I um, had foods that weren't really, um, I hate to say diet foods, but you know, like foods that weren't really on, they're, all foods are on the Weight Watcher plan. You can eat just about anything, but you know, like I really, the pizza, even though you had pizza, you know, you should, you know, whatever. But, um, uh, so I'm not, I'm not I'm not sad. I'm it's not going to floor me. It's just a number on the scale. It's not going to reflect who I am. But uh, you know nobody wants to see a gain, least of all me. But I know it's not a true gain, and I know next week I'll have a loss. I don't have a doubt of that. So um, just moving on for next week. So uh, today's topic was stand up to stigma, and she asked everybody in the meeting if they could explain what the word stigma means. You hear it every day in life, but does anybody really know what, what it means? And uh, it, the stigma means disgrace or disgraceful. So, um, you know, like, it's you shouldn't worry about what people think about you. Um, I have to tell you, though, that I've been going to Weight Watchers for 32 weeks. And this is the first, first book that we've got, this first booklet that we've gotten that uh, the leader didn't really want to talk about. Um, and I've watched some other videos online of people that went to the Weight Watchers meeting this week. And um, they all said the same thing, that it was a downer. It brought everybody in the meeting down, that the leaders really didn't talk about it too much. And um, they kind of just skipped over it. Our leader just had a, a bucket that she passed around with questions in it. And if you wanted to play, you could. And you just pulled out a question and then answered it. And then we had a discussion about it. So she didn't really talk about it. Uh, standing up for yourself and I, I think that Weight Watchers I understand what they were trying to say with the booklet but um, in my opinion it's just me um, they didn't go about it the right way at least the leaders that um, I saw not that, not that I saw the leaders but the people that reviewed their leaders online um, pretty much all said the same thing. So I'm going to try to, not to do a better job, but to try to talk about it a little bit. But um, once again, stand up to stigma. And it says, have you ever faced weight stigma? If you suspect your body size has negatively affected how someone views or thinks about you, or you've been called a hurtful name because of your weight, the answer is yes. 
Um, I don't have any really, I have one, mem one memory that really stands out in my mind of being fat shamed. I, I think it's because I, I've told you in the past, you want to look at me, look at me. You want to look at me twice, look at me twice. You want to take a picture of me, I'll stand there, you can take a picture of me. I really don't care. I know who I am. Um, I know how big I am. I know my size. I know my limitations. Um, how you see me as far as what I look like. I could care what you think. I really do. I, I really don't care. If, if you don't want to get to know who I am, I can't be bothered with you. Um, there's more to me than my weight. And I think that if you really overlook a lot of people's um, looks and want to learn about their soul and their inner being and who they are, their spirit about them, that after a while you just don't, you just don't notice it. You just, it, it's just something that, that everybody else sees but you don't because you know the true person. And uh, I think that that's, that's who I am. The only time I've ever had an issue um, is the one time when I was working at Montgomery Wards. We had leather coats that we had to chain up and I had this gentleman and I used the word nicely, um, wanted to try on a, a, a leather jacket. The largest leather, leather jackets that we had was an extra large. This man needed a 3X, but we had to try on every extra large that was on the rack. And when none of them would fit, when he got to the end, he said to me, well, I don't have to tell you how hard it is to push yourself away from the table because you obviously have issues with that yourself. Now, I could have just shriveled up and walked away. I could have just bit my tongue and figured that he's the customer and the customer is always right, but that's not who I am. <laughs> and so I did remark to him, when I do find out what the answer is to that, you'll be the first one I call because obviously you could use some advice too. Uh, obviously, he went to my manager and complained about me, and I told my manager, if you want me to quit, I'll quit. If you want to fire me, you can fire me, but um, he insulted me. And I had no reason, I don't get paid enough for the customer to insult me, especially when they have no room to talk. Uh, my manager was very kind. She understood what I was saying and just told me not to do it again. And I never did do it again because I was never confronted with that situation. But if I was confronted with that situation again in the exact same circumstances, I would have done it again. I would have lost my job. I realize that, but uh, I think too much of myself to worry about what other people think. Everybody wants to be liked. I'm not saying that I don't want to be liked. I'd like people to like me. I know there's people out there that don't like me. I, I understand that. Uh, you're not going to like everybody in the world and everybody's not going to like you. But you don't have to make everybody's life miserable just because you don't like them. Enough of that. Um, because if you're seen as inferior because of your size or weight, it has a name. Discrimination. It's especially common for women who are more stigmatized than men are. Weight stigma can come from any loved one, coworker, doctor, even a passerby. Um, I'm sure people have talked about me behind my back, but I haven't heard them. And even if I heard them, who are you? I'm just walking by, I don't care. Which is probably why I'm big, because I have the attitude like I don't care. And it's not that I don't care about myself, because I do care about myself, and I do care about how healthy I am, and I do care that I'm losing weight. I do care about all of that, but uh, your opinion of me just by how I look is the least of my worries. Um, what makes this form of stigma unlike others is that we might believe it's true, blaming ourselves for being stigmatized rather than the person who was unkind to us. Some people affected by stigma turn to food to cope, to cope for others. It chips away at their self-esteem, which has other harmful effects. I have a pretty good self-esteem. I, I don't know. This is not... Not that it, uh, it doesn't really relate to me, because, um, but I can understand how it relates to some people. I, I do have some friends that are overweight, and it bothers them. I can go, know that there's some places where I'm going to go that I'm not going to fit in the chair, because um, I may be thin on top, but I'm really bottom heavy. So I just don't go to those places, or I just stand, or I, you know, I don't, I don't worry about it. Um, I just say, you might rather not go there, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, how can you overcome it? Recognize that the stigma might happen, but that you don't have to let it hurt you. You can develop coping skills to counter negative feelings so you don't turn around and go to food in response. And one way to counter stigma's harmful effects is to bring light to the times when your feelings are hurt because of the stigma. Then reality check the negative thoughts from those of the negative feelings. 
This process can help you create a new line of thinking that leads you away from shame and toward helpful thoughts. Everybody, and I mean everybody, I don't care how thin you are, I don't care how fat you are, I don't care how good looking you are, there's something about yourself that you don't like. There's something about yourself that people are going to notice and they're going to pick at and they're going to make fun of. That's just who we are. You just have to know who you are, know that you are a good person inside, know the true you, not the person that people see as far as physical. I mean, people do see how you treat other people. They see how um, much respect you have for other people. Those things are visual things too. But um, I think that people can see that I, that I am pretty thoughtful of other people's feelings, um, which is not to say that I have not made fun of people in my mind or said something, you know, like, oh, honey, don't you have a mirror or something. But I don't say it. I guess that's mean. I guess I'm guilty. I'm just as guilty as everybody else now that I'm thinking about it. It's just... But then again, I'm human, you know, it's just, that's just part of human nature. I would never deliberately go out of my way to hurt somebody's feelings. Uh, not to say that I haven't hurt people's feelings in the past. I probably have. Um, I know I have. And it was never intentional. So, I guess, I don't know. I don't know where that thought was going. But if, I, if I've ever offended anybody, I, you know, I... I do make a point of apologizing. I have offended people in the past not realizing it, and my friends have said, you know, you hurt that person's feelings when you said this or that. And then I have made, made myself aware of that and gone out of my way to go and apologize to the person, not make an excuse for doing it, but just saying that I was wrong to do it. Okay, what to do to reality check your self-talk. Um, an unhelpful thought is, I don't blame the flight attendant for rolling her eyes when I asked her for a sleep seat belting stature. The reality is, if my friend thought this, I would tell her she did not deserve to be treated like that. And then the rethinking of it would be, I'd ask the flight attendant for a pillow or a blanket. I shouldn't feel badly about asking her for a seat belt extender or either. Um, I don't feel bad about it. When I was on the plane and I had to ask for an extender, I'm not going to see any of these people on the plane again. I mean, we're going to be together for however long the flight is. Um, but if we're going to have a problem, I want to have a seatbelt that's going to hold me in my seat. Sometimes I just kind of wonder because if you're going to crash, even though you're belted into the seat. Well, that's a bad subject, so never mind. Let's get off that thought. Um, and the Think Again page. I like this Think Again page. The unhelpful thought is, I ordered dessert tonight at dinner and the waiter gave me a look. I knew I shouldn't have ordered dessert. The helpful thought is, I ordered dessert tonight at dinner and it's my choice. If I want to spend my smart points values on restaurant in a dessert, that's what I'm going to do. It was really rude of the waiter to roll his eyes at me. Well, how you get back at that is, you don't leave a tip. Um, I've never had anybody like look at me like I shouldn't have ordered something, but... You know, that's how you pay them back. You don't have to be nasty to them. You just pay them back by not giving them any money. Then they might rethink their thought for the next heavy person that orders something. An unhelpful thought is, when I went to the doctor after starting my plan, he barely acknowledged my progress and said that I still needed to lose weight. I guess he's right. But the helpful thought is, I may want to lose more, but the number on the scale isn't all that matters. I've set other non-scale goals in starting my plan. Next time I'll remind my doctor it's not only about the scale. I love my doctor. My doctor knows I should lose weight, and she um, mentions it to me. But even if I have a small loss, she mentions that too, so she's very encouraging. She like, she'll say, oh, I see you lost 10 pounds. That's so good. You're so much well on to your goal of losing 20. So she's kind of like telling you you need to lose 20 pounds, but she's not telling you you need to lose 20 pounds. There's the recipe, which I will not be eating because I do not like goat cheese and I'm running out of time, so i got to hurry up and wrap it up, Sandy. So it's Stand Up to Stigma, and uh, I hope that you liked it. If you have any comments or suggestions for me, please include them down below. I accept criticism. Um, no skin off my nose. And um, like it or share it. Try to not have so much stigma about yourself this week. Uh, remember that we're all in this together and we're going to reach our goals. So I will see you guys next Saturday.